get that one. All right, this one is one that I've been waiting for an example like this to come up. It's my buddy Chestnut's Nut, who we're gonna talk about today. Um, so this is an iPhone 6S here for data, and you can see on the little hand cam over here that it is booting. It's taken a long time, um, but it will boot. It has image, and if we look at DC power supply, that looks a little bit unusual. It looks a little bit high, and it's kind of flickering around from like sort of, sort of this 1.5. <coughs> So that's a little bit odd, and it is taking a long time for it to progress past the Apple logo. But I think that it will, and that it's going to manifest um, uh, no touch. So right now, iTunes is recognizing it, which means that, that it has booted into the iOS. There we go. Now we can see it, a little bit of an odd image. And now if we try to swipe, we have no touch. All right, so we need touch, because we need to be able to enter the passcode and accept trust in order for this thing to be able to recover data. So with a phone that has no touch, um, I think I'm going to leave it here connected for a little bit while we talk about the touch system. So what is required for touch? Let's head over to the connector. So we're here at the schematic and this is the connector for the screen. So this is going to be anything related to LCD image, backlight, and touch. So it's all routed through one connector on the iPhone 6S. So this is a lot. <laughs> How are we gonna figure out what the hell is up with touch in this, in this view here? So we can, we can guess that, well, we probably need this power line, 5v1 touch, because it says touch, and maybe PP5v7 Mason, because Mason is a touch IC in the iPhone 6, 6 Plus. Um, and here's another one that says PN 5v7 LCM Mason, that's a touch word, and PP 1v8 touch. Those are probably all important for touch. Now remember the 6S is different than the 6 and 6 Plus because the touch ICs themselves are on the screen. So the connector really has to just deliver power for touch and then all of that touch processing is handled on the screen. So power kind of becomes more important when you have no touch in an iPhone 6S um, whereas you might have equal amounts of power and data. What about data though? Let's look through here. I see Mason, Mason, Mason. You know, I see the word touch, touch, uh, touch reset. That one sounds pretty important. So there's, if we can't find a problem in the power system, then we can look for a problem in the data system. Equally important and any side can be, uh, can be a failure point. So um, with this one, what I'd like to do is kind of check on uh, these, these power lines first. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip down to Chestnut rather than take the time to kind of follow these lines. We've, we've covered that a lot. Uh, so here we are at Chestnut. So what does Chestnut do? Here's Chestnut, his little chip, and we can see that Chestnut is connected to VCC mains. So that's how he's plugged into the wall. We've got a coil switching, switching at a coil. It makes us think of boost. And we've got some regulations, so there's some data lines there that regulate uh, chestnut output. And then we have outputs. And let's look at these outputs. Here's our buddies for touch. PN 5v7 LCM Mason. PP 5v7 Mason. This one's probably image. PP 5v7 LCM. And then this is other one for touch. PP 5v1 touch. So each of these 5v7 PP, PN, and 5v1, those are all going to be touch power lines that are outputs of Chestnut. So here's Chestnut. So Chestnut's job is to generate the power lines for image and touch. And that's why it says display <coughs> PMU. How does Chestnut do that? Well, we can guess that over here on the data line side, oh, here's LCM to Chestnut power enable. He's our buddy from good old iPhone 6 long screw damage where that guy gets cut from long screw damage and uh, then Chestnut doesn't get enabled and Chestnut doesn't make its outputs and therefore you're gonna have no touch but you'll also have no image and that's why that's sort of a signature failure for iPhone 6 long screw damage. Um, so these guys are all kind of the, the switches and control. Um, and then that kind of leaves this weirdo. You know, what the heck is up with this? All right, so this is a, a, a weird structure. 
So C4002, a 10 microfarad capacitor. Now, what do we know about capacitors? In general, when we look across the schematic, we see capacitors like these ones here at the bottom where one foot is on ground, 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 ground. All of these capacitors have one side on ground and the other side is on whatever line they're on. So that's sort of the way capacitors are traditionally working in all of these iPhones, which means that they are filtering capacitors that are there to just kind of clean up the signal in the line and make it very clear for the listening chips. So this guy's different though, because this guy doesn't have a foot on ground. So um, no foot on ground means that this capacitor is acting in a really different way. So let's look at it. I see it has, it's attached up on the top side to a line called PP chestnut CP to the, to the cap. And then the other side doesn't go to ground, it goes back to the chip, PN chestnut CN. Hmm. So for a long time, you know, it was kind of unclear, you know, what the heck is this weird cap doing? And it's, you know, since I'm not an electrical engineer, I learn about things by using practical common sense, which means, you know, talk to, talk to people around me, interact with people on YouTube and forums. And if you do that and you just kind of like talk to people a lot, then you can, you'd be surprised what you can, what you can just figure out. So my first clue on what this guy did came from a guy that, that, uh, that me and Mark met uh, having dinner at the restaurant up the street one of the course weeks. Uh, this guy named Chris. And Chris is a local circuit board designer and he has a really amazing project designing a wireless uh, transmitter for horse, a horse harness that would alert a vet to when a horse is behaving differently than its normal pattern. Uh, really, really cool project, but he knows a lot about design. So we came down to the shop and we were helping him run wires under some of his BGA chips to troubleshoot his project. And this was, uh, this schematic happened to be on the board. And I said, hey, Chris, what is up with this weird cap? What, what the heck is it doing? And he said, oh, he's like, when you see a cap that's like that, probably it is something that is really kind of important to the internal function of the chip itself. So chestnut ro relies on that cap in order to do its function. And to actually build that capacitor in the, the silicon die would be too expensive in terms of real estate of the chip. So it makes more sense to make the chip footprint smaller and to just put a big cap like that adjacent to the chip and have a line going out and coming back in. And, and so I said, oh, okay, so, so that means C4002 is like, it's, it's like a scrotum. So that cap is just kind of like important to, but external to the chip. So ever since then, I started calling C4002 chestnuts nut. And sometimes, every now and then, chestnuts nut does go bad. Now somebody came along on uh, one of our other streams talking about chestnuts nut and said, you know, chestnuts nut is something called a charge pump. A charge pump? All right, that sounds, that sounds like a hot lead. Let's look up charge pump. So we can go, um, let's go look, what, what's a charge pump? How do we, how do we find out? Let's, uh, let's see, what if we go over here? Charge pump. Wikipedia, great place. Charge pump is a DC-DC converter that uses capacitors yeah, for energetic charge storage to raise or lower voltage. That's totally what Chestnut does. It takes main 3.8 and it pumps out all of these output voltages, 5V7 and uh, PP5V7, positive 5V7, and PN negative 5V7 as well for touch. All right, so then we can kind of read it. Some form of switching device control the supply voltage across the load. And you can learn about how it actually um, does its, its job. And then here's the, here's the thing, thanks. Okay. Um, and look at this, charge pumps can double voltages, triple voltages, have voltages. And here's one, invert voltages. Yeah, cool, because that's exactly what Chestnut does. It has to generate the, PP positive 5.7 and the PN negative 5.7. Totally what this guy is. I love the internet, love, love the world. Unlike my last stream. <laughs> All right, so let's, um, let's take a look. So why am I talking about Chestnut's Nut on this stream? And it, let's get rid of this guy. 
Um, and it's because chestnut's nut then has to be there in order for chestnut to, to work and produce all of its voltages. Now this phone does have image. We saw that it had image. It took a long, long time for it to kind of get from the Apple logo to actually boot and show the lock screen and then it had no touch. So it can make image even if it's a little bit weird and we saw some odd, odd behavior on the DC power supply. Um, but it didn't have touch. Now, if we imagine, you know, you know, I've seen before a time where C402 can actually become bridged across itself, so like shorted across itself. And in that case, um, you'll have no image or touch. And in this phone, so it's, it's been kind of here for a while. It's been trolling me for a while. And then I took a look at it again today. And let's see what you guys see when we look under the microscope. So let's take a look at where is Chestnut's nut. So let's, um, let's go over to ZXW and ZXW shows us that here is Chestnut on the iPhone 6S. So here's Chestnut and C4002, Chestnut's nut. So here you can see how it comes from C4, one line out of Chestnut and then Chestnut's nut, and then it goes back to chestnut. That's the only thing it does. Does it have to be there? Uh, probably. And um, let's take a look at the board itself. So I was just kind of looking around at this board, wondering, you know, why, why the heck is this still here? Why is this not solved? Because you can tell that it had um, some image and touch kind of problems, but it really seems to have fairly minor damage. It had some typical. Uh, like VCC main damage, here you can see the completely burned up little filter that goes out to the VCC main camera LDL. Uh, that's really, really common because that's a little spot where water molecules can drop. In fact, I'm pretty sure we just said on the last stream where I was losing my shit. What's wrong with my audio? I don't see anything. What are you doing? What's wrong with audio? Oh, I know what it is. It's a, I don't, my microphone like fell off. I don't think you're going to be able to fix that for me, Lewis. Is this better? Microphone fell off. Better? Yikes. I don't see any, what does that say? I think it's the stream. Hey, Jessa, make the title more clear. What do you mean? It's clear, it's clear as can be. Don't touch Chestnut's Nut. No touch, look at Chestnut's Nut. I like it. All right, so, um, so we're looking at this board. We just had a long discussion about Chestnut's Nut, which hopefully you can, you can turn up the volume in here. Uh, later on, it looks like microphone, ding, ding, microphone just fell into this drawer when I wasn't here. Uh, all right, so we'll clear off that. Looks okay. All right, so what's the deal then with, with there's been a lot of troubleshooting a touch on here. Now let's take a look. Here is Chestnut, and Chestnut is uh, present. Everything looks fine, but Chestnut's not. Chestnut's nut is gone. Somebody has kicked Chestnut in the balls and they're just totally kicked his little scrotum right on off. So Chestnut's nut's not there. And we need Chestnut to be there. Chestnut's nut's gotta be there. So let's go ahead and see what happens to this phone if we try and get, hmm, let's see how we're gonna do that. Is there any little bit of a nub that we can tie into? Nope. All right, so we're gonna have to take this chestnut off and try to run some jumpers under chestnut on those pads to try to get a new chestnut's nut so that he can be happy. Check out my chestnut's nuts. Check out my chestnut's nuts. All right, so here's other, so, uh, let me sh tell you guys what brought me back from the brink of uh, walking out of here and, and never doing YouTube again or any of this repair because I'm going absolutely insane with the prior repair attempts and 
uh, ridiculousness. It is Paul sent me. Look at this. Louis, you're going to be so jealous. Are you ready? Paul sent me a Dogecoin. Isn't that so cool? This is like the best day ever. So Paul was a recent student that was here last week. And he sent me a, a nice little thank you note. Thanks for the excellent training. I will use it to crush my competitors and closes your very own silver Dogecoin. And for situations calling for serious thermal mass, a chunk of rebar from a Titan II nuclear missile silo in Arkansas, which is also really, really cool. And I'm totally going to use this instead of my Omnivice. Um, and then I looked up this like Titan II Arkansas nuclear missile thing. And it's, it's a really cool story. Look at that Dogecoin. Look, Lewis, it is a real Dogecoin. Look, Dogecoin even says that right on there. Love it. And then on the back, to the moon. Love, love, love it. All right, so I'm going to use my Dogecoin heat sink. I am going to use my Dogecoin heat sink to cover up my PMIC. And I'm going to make it so that you can see the, the Doge part of it. Yeah, there we go. Doge. And let's take off this chestnut, see if we can run some jumpers under it, and put on a brand new upgraded shiny chestnut snut. All right, is this a chestnut cap to lower noise in the IC? I don't think it's a, I think it's a charge pump, so go Google charge pump. I believe that chestnut's nut is, is just internal to the function of chestnut being able to generate the um, PN5V7 inverted voltage. This phone has the chestnut and it's missing chestnut's nut. This phone has image, although it is kind of delayed, it takes a long time. The phone is recognized by iTunes for a long time before it actually gets past the Apple logo and clicks over to the passcode screen, but it can do it. So it will produce image, it just takes a long time and it has no touch. And then I, I didn't show this, but earlier I did measure that the um, the PN5V7 line is like 0 0.3 instead of anything close to 5.7. All right, so we're going to take off this chestnut and see if we can doctor up those pads enough to get on a new chestnut's nut. Here, we'll make this guy come right back. I don't want you to touch that guy. There you go, bro. All righty. Radioactive rebar. Yeah, apparently that was a dude who dropped a, some sort of a, a great big screwdriver and into the missile silo there in Arkansas back when, like, Bill Clinton was governor of Arkansas. And, you know, in just a total whoops, it crashed down into the silo and it like ripped a hole in the side of the missile and let out whatever whatever gas mixture side a powers missiles and then killed a bunch of people and then there was this like great big giant emergency where they they very nearly you know blew up all of arkansas because you know that thing's a, a radioactive warhead but they didn't and i think there was like you know some some big piece of the story is a bunch of like cover up about uh yeah nothing nothing to see here the line of emergency vehicles heading out to the missiles no it's just eh, somebody dropped a screwdriver earlier it's just you know, mostly a precaution uh just carry on nothing to see here Ooh, that's gonna be that's gonna be tough to get to that. Oh yeah, that's all messed up. Oh, that's gonna make this job tough. I mean, God, God forbid something be easy. God forbid something be easy. All right, let's see what we can do with this. All right, let's just ground punch all those guys down. All right.
They had a fuel leak. Yeah, they had a fuel leak. I mean that I wonder I wonder like who is the guy? And that's like kind of the difference between like before the internet and and after the internet. Like now, you know, if you were the guy that dropped the wrench and ripped a hole in the side of a missile and uh, you know, nearly blew up a whole state. You could you could go on Reddit and be like, "I'm the guy who almost blew up Arkansas." Ask me anything. Uh, but now it's like I don't know who that guy is. Total mystery. All right, so we're a little bit screwed on the fact that we have absolutely no pad and nothing to attach to here on one side of Chestnut's nut. Um, so that is a serious challenge where I have two options on how to deal with that. One option is that I can try to lay a wire in the chip, you know, and just kind of like solder the chip, lay the wire in the chip. Uh, and the other would be to like kind of turtle, turtle back the whole thing. Uh, so let me think about which option is best. I'm not sure. It's no secret who he is. Oh, really? Who is he? What's his life story? Tell us all about it, because we're not going to look him up. We're in the middle of trying to fix Chestnut's nut. We do not have time to Google Google's Google the sort of life. Is there? Here's all I want to know. Is there a Lifetime movie called the the day I don't know the day the sun went down in Arkansas or something like that? Is there a Lifetime movie featuring this, this whole story? If so, I will watch it. Otherwise, then we are going to rely on you, Zixor, to tell us the story of the guy that nearly blew up Arkansas by dropping a wrench. Inquiring minds want to know. All right, let's see. All right. Mm, I really don't like turtle backing chips. Okay, let's see. Let's get a new chestnut and decide what we're going to do. All right, let's find some chestnuts. Part of that will be influenced by what time do I need to pick up Sam? All right, here we go. Chestnut. All right, the heat to remove is not much more than the heat to flow the board in the first place. The pads are going to fall off or be damaged with the slightest bang on the nut. That is a very, very clever way to work in. It's like Pee Wee Herman, like word of the day is nut. Try to use it as much as possible. All right. So let's. First, remember where the dot goes on the, I, it must go like this, because I remember that, like, that second one is VCC main. Let's see, does it go something like that? Let's definitely look it up so that we don't get that wrong. All right, A1 is in this sort of, like, corner by the coil, and that is where it goes. Okay. So that means the one, two, third one here has to go out to the cap. This is definitely going to be a challenge. Definitely going to be a challenge. All right. Uh, so we also need to get a actual capacitor that can be chestnuts. Now, we can probably do that last. All right. <coughs> Here's what I'm going to do. It doesn't really, you know, this thing doesn't have to do anything other than contact a wire and let's see i think i'm going to let my other wire actually be on the board let's see what kind of super thin tiny wire we have this is so thin i'd like to use the vibrator thin wire but i don't have that nearby so we'll use plan b 44 gauge wire all right. Please do not pound on the desk. Oh, I can't guarantee that. I may pound on the desk. How about this? If you guys stop reflowing underfilled chips, I will not pound on the desk during streams. That'll it'll be like a little deal. We'll make a little deal on that. 
All right. So we're going to tin this sucker up. Gonna tin this sucker up. Yeah, I had to like get talked off a ledge the other day with Lewis where I'm just like, am I doing more harm than good with this channel with all of these just tons, hundreds of, of phones that would have been recoverable that are now not recoverable because of people messing around. I mean, it's, it's really, really rampant. It's a big problem. And it kind of makes you wonder like, you know, is this a bad idea? And I'm not sure what the answer is to that. All right, so let's get our dude. All right, so let's recall where he goes. All right, so he goes like that. And it's gonna be the one, two, three. One, two, three. You guys can't see any of that. Yikes. Now it's hard for me to see, but we can survive that. All right, so I'd like to use the micro pencil, but it's not plugged in. So let's just see, can I stick this in there? Yes, but I'd like it to be a little bit more robust than all that. All right, let's see. It really doesn't have to continue being a ball. It just really needs to have that wire kind of talk to the chip. That's the only thing it needs to do. All right, so what I'm actually gonna do here is put a little flux here to get it to stick. There. Now he can't run away. And I'm gonna make a little less flux there. I doubt anyone that watches your content is doing these things. I don't know. I mean with that one phone where I where it's, you know, the totally, totally bastardized iPhone 7 um, from the other day, it was I believe somebody put it on a hot plate to take the shields off. You know, how many people, how many people have been really saying, you know, you have to take the shields off if you want to treat water damage. I feel like that's kind of a, kind of an iPad rehab thing that, that we really heavily popularized for a long time. Um, but you, you know, take the shields off is great as long as you are able to execute that. You know, putting so I feel like if I'd never said take the shields off, would they have still put that on the hot plate to take the shields off? Maybe not. Uh, I need this to be way more robust than that. Way, way, way more robust than all of that. All right, it's gonna have to be a double tweezers affair. Damn it, not that robust. Get out of there.
All right, let's make this wire kind of cut off and stick it on the other side. Ooh, sticky tweezers had that today. Tiny diode in a corner beside a plastic relay and had to guess. Okay. All right, let's do get off. I think it's time to switch out these old tweezer uh, tips. It has come to the end of the end of the road for them. All right, let's tin this one. And even though the other line could technically sit on the board, I think we'll just kind of do them both the same. All right, so pretty sure. Oh no, I totally miscalculated and it is on the end. That means I should have cared about that ball that's next to where I put this jumper. I didn't, I thought they were next to each other, but they're not. So now that ball is too small, but it's a ground ball. So I'm gonna not worry about it. So now that wire is in that ball. All right, let's clean this off with alcohol and see what we can do to make this actually work. Okay, so I've got my two jumpers for my missing chestnuts nut wires, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to see if I can kind of keep those wires in there a little bit more sustainably by using the UV UV stuff. Uh, they might come out, they might not come out, you know, who knows? But I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and give that a shot. So let me grab the UV stuff. course week is over where is everything now that course week is over thought I had this stuff on my desk like earlier today. Oh, I'm going to look around and find the UV, the UV solder mask and our new UV light that makes things get UV cured UV quick. As long as you use our new UV glasses for eye protection. So let me find some of that. Where is it? Where got it? Let's go check the good old Mark Jacobs.
go. And now I have no idea where it is. Maybe I should put it on hand camera and you guys can look around my desk and just tell me. Tell me where this is. Because it's going to be right here. And all three or four of these phones all have the same exact problem. All right, when in doubt, go steal from supply. So we're going to use the UV, UV curable green solder mask, not to be confused with solder mast, which is what it says on here and what all of China calls it, but I can't understand that in any way. <laughs> so I'm just going to apply this like it was nail polish almost with just some tweezers. So let's get some of this goo out. All right, now my goal is to just get it somewhat on these balls. There. All right, so my, my only goal with that is to just try to keep those jumpers kind of anchored into those solder balls a little bit because I'm going to be putting heat on it. They're going to get liquid and they're going to want to go everywhere. Now, right now, this is still nail polish, so it's still uh, liquid and I need to make it into a cured solid. So I'm going to do that by subjecting it to UV light. Now, UV light is really bad for your eyes. In fact, back in grad school when we had to um, expose gels to things that would fluoresce under UV light, you know, you wouldn't believe the kind of face masks and stuff that you had to use for that stuff. So I have been up until now using our, um, here I'll show you, the iPad Rehab, the iPad Rehab little, doohickey right there in the corner on the top of that black box the ipad rehab nail salon style uv light source which you know this is great but that takes a long time that's relatively low powered and every now and then you want to just get something done quickly so i'm going to use this this is also available in ipad rehab supply this is your high powered uv light and i was not willing to sell this earlier until I said, you know what, as long as we sell it with UV protective glasses, then okay. So wear these and it's, you know, it's not, it's not ha ha wear these, like seriously wear the UV eye protection because UV, you know, just like with the eclipse glasses, you need to protect yourself. All right. So this just plugs into, um, a standard any kind of five volt, you know, charging brick. And now it's gonna be really, really quick to cure it. All right, so I'm just putting some UV light, which you can, you can kind of see a little bit. And I'm trying to not look at it directly. So I'll, I'm actually gonna look at it indirectly up there through, through, the, uh, through the screen. 
Let's see. Buy a portable flashlight UV. Alrighty. Does anyone know where to buy bulk parts for phones? All right. Why not just make new pads with wire and place the chip on top? What? That doesn't make any sense. How can you make new pads that go that go nowhere? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so let's see if that's enough. So this really only takes a few seconds. Okay, so we have this turned off. Disconnect. Goodbye, sweet UV glasses. Now let's take a look and see how that looks under here. Let's find out together. All right, so now the, the UV solder mask has a, had a chance to cure. So now it's hard. Dirk, dirk. All right, so let's look back at our chip area and um, that should all be good. I think what I'm going to do before, I'm not really sure if I should. I think I'll solder the chip on first, and then we'll come back and add chestnut's nut. All right, so this needs to get flipped over. These little wires are in the way. And one of them's in the wrong spot. Fan fantastic. Way to go, way to go, Jessa's spatial relations. Fantastic. So we will scrap that and we'll grab a new chestnut because Jessa put the chestnut, one of the chestnut things, in the wrong, totally wrong place. Of course she did, because that's how this whole week has been going. All right, let's grab another one. Oh man. Let's, wow, there's like none left in here. Well, there's one. Hey, little buddy. Just one is fine. All right. And we're going to have to move you over. All right, so we're going to work down here. All right, so that side goes there. And let's get your, your buddy. All right, so that side goes there. So we need this one and that one. Yikes. All right, stick you in there. So let's just focus on getting this done and not listening to too much of the rest of the world. All right. And let's get this. Goodbye, chestnut. Now you go here. make this smaller now so that it's not such a difficult thing. All right, fine. And repeat. We'll get to do another quick look at the UV stuff. Alcohol clean, dry, all right. T 
Somebody said, how hard can the mask be? <clears throat> I don't know the answer to that. I don't even know what would be the units of, of hardness. Um, no, no idea on that. All right, so let's put this back on and let's hope I didn't lose my tube of this stuff. All right, that's right there. This is right here. And we're going to squirt out a little bit of it. I'm just going to kind of put some out here on um, on the little post-it note squirt. There we go. All right. Now let's get it back on where it's supposed to go on this chip. And this whole business is kind of, you know, overkill or just, it's just an experiment. I, I haven't really done one like this before. So it's just kind of an idea to see if, you know, it doesn't take very long to add just a little bit of the green to just kind of in theory, help this jumper, you know, stay, stay where, stay within that ball. We'll see. All right, so let's put that right there and let's cure it again. Let's cure it. Let's see if we can see anything under the microscope. Not by looking in the microscope, even with the glasses on, but by looking up on the screen. All right, so here's this. And here comes my, my UV light. That's pretty cool. Now don't look in the microscope and focus UV light on your eyeballs. But since I'm projecting it up on a screen, uh, you know, then it's kind of cool to look at. Pretty cool. Why the glasses? Because UV can really damage your retina and you don't want to expose yourself to uv light not when it's really concentrated like this this is concentrated uv light that's able to to cure this uv cu curable adhesive in 10 or 15 seconds as compared to the standard kind of like nail dryer uv light which takes 10 or 15 minutes all right Okay, so that's turned off. And I'm gonna disconnect that as well in case kids come by. I consider that pretty dangerous. Okay. So we're gonna stick that on there and there's a little touch, a little hint of the green on an adjacent ball that I wanna kind of knock off. It is funny how the act of live streaming a repair, you know, it doesn't really change the repair that, that much, but just the, I, I don't know what it is about YouTube that just kind of makes simple things take a really, long, really, really long time. Don't know why. All right, that seems good to me. We'll see if I put it on the right spot or not. No guarantees, entirely possible that I effed it up again who knows let's see if this looks like it's going to solder on our board in the right spot or not
All right, that looks so far so good. That looks like the right spot. All right, let's get a little bit of flux in the area. And this time I'm gonna try to like hang on to it. Okay, now let's watch these jumpers just float away, as is probably the case. Let me get my Dogecoin back in the house. Okay, now let's see if we can get my one jumper away from that other cap. And we need to harvest a chestnut's nut and then we'll see whether or not this worked. All right, let's see, let's take a peek. Let's take a peek at Chestnut's balls. Uh, we'll see. All right. Just can't let this guy touch him. All right, he's not. Great, okay. Donor board, let's grab Chestnut's nut. A fresh, a fresh nut. A fresh chestnut's nut. Let's see. Here's a donor board from A6S. And there is a okay looking kind of water damage-y chestnut's nut. Sounds great. Why didn't you put the jumpers on the pads? Because there aren't any pads. If there were pads, we wouldn't have been doing any of that. There 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 are no pads. The what the what the cap needs to connect to is the chip you know so there's there aren't any pads the cap has to be connected to the chip and so therefore we had to add jumpers essentially to the chip and since the chip had solder balls on it we stuck them in the solder balls alrighty Now, just like any cap, chestnut's nut here itself is not going to have any kind of left and right or back and forth orientation. That's really not a great copy of chestnut's nut, but we'll see if it works. Oh, that looks like a good enough spot to solder it to. Here, why don't you lay down in a little bit of flux. Great. All right. Now let's see if we can solder these wires. Ah, get back here. 
to either side of chestnut's nut. Stop it. Oh, get back here. can be there but you can't be on the other side there you go buddy now you're not tinned at all So really not tint. Messy desk version. Boom. That is some messy desk soldering. First side I'm okay with. I'm not sure about the second side. I couldn't really see that very well. Eh, close enough. All right, let's test. All right, exactly on the missing pads, then UV cure it so you would not have to be worried about flying. I don't understand what you're talking about. I mean, that would be like saying Jessa. I mean, like it's, it's saying the exact same thing as saying Jessa. Why don't you make, here's missing pad. See, that's just blue. There's no pad there. Why don't you coil up some wire right there and make a pad at, with a jumper on it and then solder to that? Like it does, there, there's, it doesn't, it's not meant, it doesn't connect to the board. I'm just trying to, to do exactly what we just did, which is connect the jumper to the chip. It doesn't touch the board. There's nothing that, that, you know, the board can't help it. It's just, it doesn't go to the board. It's just to the chip. So there's no, there's no reason why I would want to attempt to make these, you know, what I've just done out here, these, this connection to the cap. I don't want to try to do that underneath there. That'd be really, really tight and really, really, really difficult. It's hard enough out here. All right. All I want is for the, for the cap to be dangling. On. It's chestnuts nut. Look at it. It's a scrotum for chestnut. That's all it is. All right, let's let that kind of hang right there and see. Now I don't want the wires to kind of touch or get grounded on that ground. Let's just let's just test and then we'll troubleshoot if we have problems cuz I'm in a little bit of a hurry to pick up Sammy. Alrighty, so we're gonna do that. Don't play with your nuts. You might go blind. Yes, don't play with chestnuts, nuts, and the UV light, or you might go blind. I might go blind trying to put this connector on here. Sheesh. Maybe you guys can help me understand what, uh, why, why Agent 47 and Cormac Piper all want to shove wires. I don't, I really don't get that. Why they want to shove difficult wires under chestnut 
for no reason. Why? Why do you want to do that? Why do you want to do that? All right, let's see. So if this doesn't work, you know, this, this was not as like super fast and easy as I would have liked it to be. So if this doesn't work, then my next step would be to just turtle back chestnut and make sure that I can like see and measure all of its connections and not, not kind of have to guess like you're un, when you're under a chip. Okay, let's put you back on hand camera. Did I already do that? Hand camera. All right, not good news. I don't see any image. So image is, you know, a chestnut function and we don't have image, which tells us that chestnut is not really sitting down and married to on all of its pads, which kind of stinks. All right, so it's booting, no image. Let me just make sure of, that it's not this screen. I think I used the other screen. So let's just make sure we don't have image with this screen here. Chestnut's not starting to not like you. You were like my little buddy before. You were like this funny, cool little cap, this little weird oddball cap. Now you're starting to be a pain in my ass. Starting to be a pain in my ass, chestnut's nut. All right, let's check for image on this screen. Do do. All right. Is it booting? Just no image? Yes. Oh, yeah, we got image. All right, game on. Uh, I guess this, yeah, this is the, this is the devices screen, which was a water damage device. So that goes with the housing. This is the, this is the test screen, same as we used before. All right, so now we're either going to have touch or not. If not, then we're still going to blame chestnut's nut and we're going to have to like, you know, try again or turtle back chestnut to get easier access to his nut. All right, so let's looking over here at DC Power Supply. It's not, it's not showing us that spiking up to one. Oh, maybe it is. Uh, I don't know. See what I mean about it taking a long time uh, to get to progress from detected by iTunes. So you know, booted iTunes thinks it's detected. It's already made that sound. Hear that? Bing. So it's booted already, but it's still on the Apple logo. So this kind of like long delay does not bode well. All right, so let's see. Um, will we have touch? All right, let's see. Ah, touch, yay! Shouldn't have touched it that way because now I'm stuck in the camera and no way out. Sweet. All right, so we have touch. You can see that I can like, I can make this go. Yay. Perfect. Okay. So, uh, great. All right. So I'm going to, you know, move this over to be recovered. So this, so now we've got a path to data. Fantastic. So chestnuts nut then is required for touch. Let me actually see what happens if I stick a home button one. What happens if you put a home button on after the fact? I guess it doesn't matter because I have to still put it on a battery to recover data. Is it gonna let me do that? Oh, it did. It did for a second. Trust. Yes, let me hit trust. I don't think I can show you guys that. Actually, let's take that off so that we can. Trust. Yes. 
Yay! I'm gonna enable his, uh... Ooh, don't look at that. <laughs> Let's go to, um, accessibility and put assistive touch on. There we go. Practical repair. So all of you guys that think that my little chestnut's nut is janky, it really doesn't matter. There it is, so cute. Look at my scrotum. Look at my little scrotum. My little chestnut's nut just hanging out. Look at that. And that little dude, my chestnut's nut, is all that this phone needed in order to recover Michael's precious. Uh, water damage is pretty severe. He wants recover all data. Priority is photos and notes and contacts and texts and voicemails and anything else. All right, Michael, it's going to be good news. We have a path to data for you. And I completed a stream without banging on the table. So that is it for, um, for us for today. And if you want to get yourself some safety UV goggles, which will keep your eyes from getting burned up when you use UV, uh, UV curable solder mask, then you can find those, the UV light, the solder mask, and the iPad Rehab protective goggles on iPadRehab.com supply store. And we will see you guys next time.